As a woman, would you consider your relationship with the LDS Church as abusive? Next on the Ex Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you joining with us. And today we have Laura Pennock. Laura, I'm really pleased and happy that you've come here to share your story. Yeah. And we're uh, going to learn or be exposed to a couple of interesting facets that I don't think we've really done much of over the, gosh, 350 interviews <laughs> we've done. So, but we appreciate you coming. Well, and sure. As we usually do. Where were you born and where were you raised? And I was born in Moab, Utah, when Moab was not... Not cool. Quiet, now it's really cool. City. <laughs> it was just like a little backwater and yeah. and was not cool. It was a little mining mining town. And um, my parents spent a little bit of time here in the Intermountain West after I was born. And then they moved to Texas. Uh, my mother is from Texas down in the Houston area. Ooh. So she... Um, she grew up Talked down there. Her husband into yeah. going back. <laughs> well, he was looking for work, and he didn't have a college education yet, and oh. and so he got a job with Monsanto with a, a chemical oh, plant down there, yeah. and so they were there for a while. And he went back to school. My mother is a school teacher. He went back to school and got his teaching certificate. So oh. he got his bachelor's degree and a teaching certificate, wow. and um, then they just packed up and brought us all back to. Um, this little town called Paradox, Colorado, and if you don't know where that is, it's right next to Bedrock. So, <laughs> and where is Bedrock? <laughs> so, if you know where Moab, Utah is, Telluride, Colorado, Straight Grand through. Junction, it's kind of in, it's in, in that, that area. area. Yeah. Okay. So, and by group, uh, how many brothers and sisters did you I have? I have three or? sisters. They oh, were all a girls, bunch of girls. Huh? Oh boy, <laughs> I bet Dad was thrilled with that. Yeah, well, I, t I you know I tease him and said that you know he he prayed when he was a teenager to please God let me be surrounded by women who adore me. So you know that's what happens. <laughs> Religiously, were they uh, were they LDS? Yes, my mother is a convert. Or are they LDS? And, or? and my father grew up in the church, and um, and he had just experienced his his uh, convert experience. He'd had his convert experience just before he met my mom. So they are now uh, devout, have been all of my life. Um, oh they were, I don't think they, um, they were not married in the temple, but they were sealed and they were sealed before I was born. So I was born in the covenant. Oh, okay. And they were born in the Manti temple and um, they now work in the Monticello temple. So they are still very, very devout, active, believing Mormons. <laughs> well, I guess maybe we could ask now, how do they feel about your journey? <laughs> we don't really talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I've experienced that same yeah. thing. Yeah, but and I think a lot of people do. Either you have, just, you know, really hard feelings about it, you know, between family members, or you just don't talk about it. And we're just, just on the don't talk about it sort of thing. It's better to bring it, not don't bring it yeah. up or anything. Yeah. <laughs> So growing up, I guess active, you're baptized at age eight. Yes, and... I was baptized at age eight. Grew up in the church. Um, never really felt um, terribly. I, I never had one of those experiences where I felt like I was enfolded in a ward, you know, and really? just really. Now, my... was it because you'd moved a little bit? Do you think um, that's it part was of it, because or... of um, being in this really small, isolated community. Um, my parents came back there, and they came back with um, college educations and they there was a three room schoolhouse so they were the school teachers there and oh, so and they were i think that i was the only person that i knew in my high school who had both parents who had graduated from college oh. some kids had had maybe a parent one parent graduate from college oh. or maybe one parent have some college but so I, you know, we really didn't fit in there. And again, this was Paradox? Was yeah. That then? Okay, that's yeah. where you went to high school. Uh, well, okay. I went to grade oh. school there, and then we went to Natarita for um, junior high, and then we went to Nucla for high school. So it was like, you know, we, we were bussed out. I have to look those up out. on a map, but in the <laughs> yeah. Colorado area there. <laughs> yeah, okay. in that area. So Nucla right. is like 35 miles from Paradox. And okay. so we rode the bus every day and just never really kind of fit in. There were people who had remained there in Paradox and, you know, they kind of 
they, they sort of owned the town, you know, they sort of mm -hmm. ran things and they were the, and then my parents come in there and they're doers and they're, they're organizers and they, mm -hmm. you know, so sort of took over the school and took over the church and it kind of rubbed some people. I mean, it made some people feel like that they, that my parents were looking down on them. Mm -hmm. And were these branches or wards? It was, a, it was a branch, branch there where I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there were, you know, never very many people and, so everybody was in everybody's was business. Was there even seminary? Was there much? Seminary? We did do early morning seminary. Oh, wow. um, my last two years of high school, I believe, it was it was horrible. I hated it. Oh, <laughs> it was way too early in the morning. Yeah, I was going to say probably so, five thirty, yeah. six o'clock. Or yeah, something. it was. Yeah, <laughs> that's and, tough. You know, we got release time here in Salt Lake, yeah. so just <laughs> during part of nope. school. But. We had early morning seminary, and I was not really convinced that, you know, this was necessary sort of yeah. thing, you know, and so we had an early morning seminary and we had this, for a few years, we were, my um, sisters and I were attending Young Women's in LaSalle, which was a drive over the hill and back, and it's like, why? Yeah. Why? So. Well, were you, uh, was your, do you, do you feel like the church was true though? I mean, your I testimony did. of yeah. it and I, you know, I, I sort Smith of, and I sort of took that in and didn't yeah. question that, that, yeah. that, yeah, you know, the church is true and Joseph Smith was a prophet and this is, you know, and. Uh, what did you think about Jesus at this point? If you can kind of recall oh, back gosh, in those that days. That was all part of it, you know, that you had Heavenly Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and they were, you know. Kind of understood he yeah. was your older brother. Yeah. Did you think yeah. Jesus was my older brother, and, yeah. and Heavenly Father and Jesus had bodies of flesh and, and bone like ours, and the Holy and, you know, the Holy Ghost was was a disembodied spirit and was, you know, sort of... Waiting sort of, or something yeah. to get his body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, Interesting. Yeah. So what happens after high school? I, um, I sort of drifted around. Um, I, I went to Snow College. I was enrolled at Snow College for oh, a year. Okay. And... Um, that I had no business being there. <laughs> I ended up um, I ended up going to beauty school uh, later of a year and a half or so after after high school. I went to, Ephraim or no? Or I went to um, I went to Provo. I was home for a bit after oh, okay. I went to Snow, and then I went to uh, beauty school in Provo, and I still maintain an active cosmetology license, mm. and um, and I did hair for a little while um, mm. for a few years at Great Clips and places like that when. Oh. Here when I was, you know, it was a great part-time sort yeah. of thing, and so, but yeah, I graduated from the University of Utah. Um, I came. I actually you left were busy home. Busy in school. I mean, in church all this time. Are you attending church? Most yeah, of the time? I drifted away from the church after, um, after high school. I mean, I was at Snow College and I was attending meetings because it's you know kind of like that's what you do because yeah. everybody's doing it right. and then when i went to beauty school i was also in a byu ward and so i sort of attended and you know and then i left um i ended up meeting a guy um who was from boston he had been hitchhiking across the country and mm -hmm. he had run out of money in colorado and i was <laughs> in this little tourist town and i was waiting tables and he chose me and so we ended up I had drifted away from the church. I was like, you know, I wasn't going to church anymore. And I was like, you know, I just, I, I was never. Was he Mormon? He was not Mormon. Oh, okay. He was not Mormon at all. <laughs> and um, so he asked me after a year and a half or so if I wanted to move to Boston with him. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, you know. I was, now, was this before or after the University of Utah? You graduated that was, from that the was U? That was before, yeah. And before the, the, so, Yeah, I spent okay. a few years, spent a few so years in Boston, Boston, married him, left him there, came back, and oh, that's when I came back to the did. church. Oh. Came back um, home, went to school, so that was when I ended up actually attending college for real, yeah. and um, went back to the church. And when did you graduate in? At the English. Oh, okay. I have an English degree. Okay. So. Right. Yeah. And you got serious about the was church. I was very serious about it. I was going to make it work. I was going to, you know, I was going to do this. And I was, um, I was, you know, I was going to do it. And yeah. So you felt all the reasons for inactivity before were your fault. I mean, yeah, the, yeah. It was just, you know, the church I, was true. You yeah, just needed to true. get back to it. Yep. And, I just, yeah. I had just drifted away and now I was going to, yeah. I was back and I was going to do it. I was going to do it for real. 
Now, it's going to make it work. Did you go through the temple at this point? Or did I you? did. Oh, I did. did. I, I went through the temple, took and... out my endowments. What did you think of that experience? Um, I thought it was weird. It was <laughs> when they still had the, you know, the blood oaths and yeah. stuff. And I was like, I, you know, I remember sitting there and I looked over at my, <laughs> my escort and she's like, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You'll understand eventually, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So oh, I did funny. attend the temple a few times and, you know, it was kind of a... It was kind of an interesting place. To me, it was like, you know, a place where I could just kind of go and be away from the normal everyday cares, you know, yeah. and just kind of a place of, to be separate and to yeah. kind of be with myself and, and to, to, you know, bring my answer, bring my questions and bring my burdens, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. So it really worked out well for me as far as that was concerned. I wasn't really paying attention to what I was saying, <laughs> what I was agreeing you to. Know, I know. It, it, you really don't stop and think. I'm doing work for the dead. Yeah. You know. Uh, we yeah, don't, but and, you we know, don't even really think that, yeah. do we? I mean, we're yeah. just doing temple work. Yeah, and you and, know, and you know that happens all... to be for these people that have passed away. Well, you know, that's the plan of salvation. You know, they didn't yeah. get a chance to have the gospel while they were here on earth. So you know, <laughs> we'll go do wonderful us. For. We're just going to go and do it for them. You know, so they yeah. have a chance to. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it all made it all made sense in that sort of that sort of worldview. Um, yeah. But yeah, then I had um, I had an experience which made it really clear to me that women and evil were two sides of the same coin, and especially single women were dangerous, and that just blew me right <laughs> right. Well, up. you'd I always was, been aware of the patriarchal order, yeah, right? Yeah, I had. But this would just kind of struck you. Differently. Yeah, this what? one it just sort of hit me in the face. What happened? That I was. Um, we, our stake did a production of The Music Man, and I was paired as a dancer with another person, a guy from another ward. He was in an emotionally abusive relationship, and a marriage, a really, really abusive um, marriage, and he decided that he was going to divorce his wife and he was going to marry me. This went <laughs> zooming around the stake, and, you know, oh, and, but I was the one who was viewed as the homewrecker, the person oh. who was responsible. And, you know, I hadn't done anything. He had never, he hadn't asked me if, you know, if be, I was, you know, I knew that if, even if he had divorced his wife, you know, it was like, I wasn't gonna marry him <laughs> the next day, you know, even, I mean, we may have dated after a period of time because I understood what divorcing somebody meant yeah. you know you have to you need a period to just kind of get some perspective and figure it out before you're ready to move into another relationship so yeah. you know i was like so i was kind of taken aback when i um when it was clear it was becoming clear to me that i was the one who was at fault Did here and to blame to yeah it was you know my bishop Talk to me about it, really? and 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 I was like, yeah, this somehow isn't this my is fault. not, yeah, <laughs> it's, this is not, this is not right. The assumptions that are being made here, I'm not the one who initiated this. I am not the one who encouraged this. I did not tell him I was gonna. Oh yeah, go divorce your wife. I mean, I I will certainly marry you, sort of thing. But I was the one who was dangerous because I was single and I was female. And that made me a predator, as sort of, you know, like, yeah. and and I just, you know, it's like, mm-mm. <laughs> so. Well, I didn't know this was going to take this kind of a, a direction. <laughs> My thought, thinking in the sense of being abusive relationship in the church is th that you're almost a second-class citizen. Well, absolutely. And maybe the disrespect that you were feeling, too. That you're just, your voice has no, Yeah. You, they're not yeah. listening to your yeah. side of the story. Yeah, you have no weight. There's an assumption yeah. there that because you're female, you are in this category, and these sort of things are true about you, yeah. whether they are or not. Right. Um, and if you're male, you're in this category, and these sort of things are true about you. And so for, it just made that really clear to me, and I was like, 
there is no, there really is no place for me here. What am I, what am I doing wonder if here? God's involved in that yeah. for sure. Is yeah. this for really <laughs> yeah. God's work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what does that say about God's view of me too? You that's know, if true. that's, yeah. if that's how the church views me and the church speaks for God, right. then where does that leave me with God? And so I did leave the church in a, you know, I mean, I was, I ended up standing in a crater where the foundations of my faith had been. And I just felt like, you know, I, I actually said, well, God, I don't know if you exist. And if you do, I don't know if there's an appropriate place for you in my life. And, um, you know where to find me and just kind of, you know, okay. You know where to find me. <laughs> That's right. I'm not going anywhere. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, and that kind of... Now, did you share this with a bishop? or did No, you I didn't. I just left. Anybody? Your parents, uh, did you talk to them at no. all? No. No. You just left? I just left. No. You know, I was like... Mm, now, did no. you ever go back? I did. Oh. Um, I met my husband, my current husband, at the University of Utah. He's a chemist, so he was uh, majoring in chemistry, and I was majoring in English, and so we met at a chemistry lab. <laughs> and the way that happened is they had... Um, they had done these conferences, these obscure conferences, and they had these papers that needed to be edited into a readable, you know. And, With your English yeah. background. Yeah, and they needed to be made photo ready, you know, mm. so that they were ready to go to the printer and be be um, put into a journal. Proofread or whatever. Yeah, okay. so I did the copy editing of all of those papers and got them into the right format and everything, and, and we sent them off, and, and my husband was working at that, lab. And, and so is he LDS? He was raised LDS. My husband is kind of an interesting case okay. because he was raised LDS and, and his family is very devout. And I assumed a lot of things about him <laughs> and his spiritual life based on that. Sure. <laughs> Come to find out, he has never really bought into the whole theology thing. It's mm. like Mormons are his people. They're his tribe. Yeah. And he's not interested in finding another spiritual home, but I but he really doesn't have some a spiritual connection to the church and to, even to God really. He's like he's he's kind of like I can take it or leave it and but he doesn't ever he's never bought this idea that the church is true and that this is really the, the way it is and all of that kind of stuff truth. and so if he goes to church that's where he goes is to a mm -hmm. Mormon ward and but most of the time he really doesn't. Mm. And so the way I came back to the church was that we got married and we had a child. And he said, you know, maybe we should start going back to church. And to me, that was like, God was like, I know where to find you. <laughs> and this is it, huh? This is it. So and then back. you were active. I mean, you were Relief Society. Yeah, I was very stuff, active. And... I took my, I brought my doubts with me. And I did get in trouble a couple of times. Now, which doubts are these? What? That the church is true and that this is really the way God oh, wants it. Oh. And that this is, you know, all of this sort of stuff. I was like, okay, I will go back and I will serve the institution. And, you know, we will do that. Um, I ended up, a lot of times I was teaching Relief Society, which was my favorite calling. I really loved it. But there were a couple of times when, you know, the Relief Society presidency would say that's... Stick to the script, you know, oh, sort really? of thing. It's like because I felt inspired to, you know, to to speak a little differently than what what was really on the, the normal page. <laughs> the normal words. And you know, so I was like, okay. And then I would, you know, do your own thing. <laughs> do my own thing. Most of the time, I stuck to the script. Most of the time, I was really good. Yeah. But occasionally, I felt inspired to go in a slightly different direction. And one of those times was. There was a new convert in our ward, um, and she she didn't last very long, but she had felt inspired, you know, felt really like she needed to come that Sunday, and I was teaching, and I was way off script, and turns out that I was speaking to her at that at that meeting. So what kind of things were you saying? Um, things like, well, I think I opened with, I cannot stand here and tell you that you are made in the image of a male god. You know, we we're females. <laughs> so, you know, that was my jumping Ooh, off that's point. That's an interesting and, point. For, you know, and yeah. so I kind of just talked about, 
I don't even remember what I said, but I remember that was my jumping off point. But it impacted point. her. Too, it did. Probably. It had, a, you know, it was it was what she needed to hear, and yeah. I was, I was like, oh, you know, and of course I stick to the script. Okay, I mean, I they didn't need to know that yeah. I didn't feel like that I wasn't going to argue with them and say, well, I was, you know, I was inspired to do this or whatever. It was like, okay, wow. you know, so. Well, then what happens? Anyway. I mean, do you continue on in the yeah, church? Yeah, I did for a while. We actually moved to Ohio. We lived in Ohio for five years, and um, there was a ward there um, that I was in, and they, um, I served in the Relief Society presidency there. And then when they called me to that position, I, I, I just said, are you sure? <laughs> because, you know, you don't want me with all of my doubts and my, you know, my pushing, you know, against the pushing rails the at buttons. times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want my mother-in-law. She's never questioned. She's she's always been completely sure that the church was 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 true exactly as it was presented, and that this yeah. was, you know, I mean, she's never wavered, never doubted. And I'm like, you want her <laughs> as a Relief Society president, not me. But um, so I was. Uh, we were there in Ohio for five years, and I was in the Relief Society presidency for at least two of that. And it may, I think it was two years that I was there. And then my husband um, got a job transfer, and we ended up back in Utah. And hmm. I didn't, um, I was exhausted. This move was really, really difficult for me. And um, and I just, you know, Sundays were for sleeping. Sundays. <laughs> and so I didn't ever really integrate into the ward that was right across the street. And um, I went a few times and, and then... Did you feel guilty? I mean, did you feel... I didn't. I was just exhausted. Oh, and I was just okay. like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just tired. And so... And you um, have a couple of kids. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah okay. A couple of kids. And they were in you know, junior high and high school yeah. coming back and, you know, new schools and all that stuff. And but the church was true, right, at this point still? Um, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah. And Joseph Smith still looked yeah. off. And, um, I, I still sort of accepted that without yeah. really questioning a whole lot. Yeah. And um, so then what ordained women. To, yeah, ordained women came that? along. Ordained women, okay. And I went to their launch meeting, and I felt like I can stay in the church. These are my people. I have people here. I can stay, and it just a lot of things became started becoming really clear to me, and I started thinking about the things I'd been taught and whether I really believed that the church was the one true church, and Joseph Smith was a prophet, and. All of these things just they started really coming into focus, and um, it wasn't long before I lost hope that the church would ever um, would ever dismantle the hierarchies that were separating me from citizenship you know in the in the kingdom and yeah. those kinds of things so what did yeah. ordain women actually? I mean, I know they wanted to, to have a share in the yeah. priesthood or yeah. be considered to be equal citizens yeah. That hasn't still happened yet. That but. hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but yeah. what what more did that bring to you or th your thinking? Um, it really clarified that I did not have a place in um, in the church. That I would always be on the margins. That I would my voice was not going to matter, and that my I, I was just never going to have what I call citizenship in the kingdom. And if I didn't have citizenship in the kingdom in in that form. What did that mean about being a child of God and being, having citizenship in the kingdom of God? What did, what did that mean for my relationship with God? And, yeah. and what did God want? Um, what was God's will in, in terms of that relationship with me? So as mediated by the church, it was not a great relationship. I would always be, I would never be allowed to return to God. You know, I mean, I would always have to have my face hidden from God because I could never, there would always be that separation. Interesting so. that you say that because of the temple, right? Mm -hmm. You have to veil yeah. yourself in the and, temple. Yeah. Did you ever know the scripture uh, that, uh, and I'm not sure where it is, but where there, it says there are no longer Jew or Gentile, male yeah. or female. Yeah, that is a central and scripture it, for uh, ordained women. Was that, it? Yeah. That, that it's like we're really equal yeah. and, and we should be treated that way. Yeah. And, yeah. Interesting. So. Yeah, so I mean, you so you left the church then? I did. I left the church for good. I mean, I had to, you yeah. know, like an abusive relationship, I had to, you know, go back and, and leave and go back. And, you know, I mean, I had to, it took me a few times, 
but I've left for good now. <laughs> okay. And did you uh, did you sense then um, uh, Jesus still in your life or Absolutely. God? Absolutely. Did yeah. you really? I was. I was. This time I was like, God is here and God is speaking to me and God does not want that for me. And so, I've I've always felt like that God was there, and never left me. I mean, sometimes I walked away and said, you know, I don't want to talk to you for a little bit, but it, but God has always been there, and God has always been calling to, you know, I mean, inviting me back yeah. and inviting me into relationship. Did you sense Christianity had anything to offer you? Or? I did, because that's the language that I speak, you know, yeah. is Christianity. That's the way I understand God. It's the way I, um, you know, in the Bible is how I encounter, one of the ways I encounter God, and yeah. and so that, you know, I that's my heritage and that's my, you know, that, that's my native language, really. Well, did you go to different churches or did, did you look around? And, I did. I did looked you? around and, and I, um, I went to the United Church of Christ. There's a bountiful um, congregation. And at the same time, I was kind of going to Community of Christ as well, you know, kind of attending both places. And, and I did that for a few years because I just needed to kind of rest for a bit. And then... Um, and then I got serious. Um, after a while, it was like I, I need to, I need to stop and discern where is God calling me? Where is my place? Where, where do I, where am I to to live out my, um, my relationship with God? And, it and was at this first. point, did you understand at all um, what a Christian perspective of Jesus and His grace and I works? Did. did? I you had understand some that? understanding of that. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, before yeah. I came out, <laughs> I just thought, you know, he'll pick up the pieces at the end yeah. there and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. And I think that my time in the United Church of Christ, you know, just in that congregation and kind of thinking about these things. Is that non-denominational? It is. No, a, it's a, um, it's a congregationalist. Oh, um, congregationalist. Yeah, okay. they're uh, very. But you ended up with Community of Christ. Yeah. Now for anybody listening, that's the former our oh, LDS, yes. the yeah. Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh -huh. And we're going to talk about that in our next little segment and maybe get a perspective of, of what you have done with that church. And I think a lot of us former Mormons and even Mormons probably don't mm -hmm. know as much about the community yeah. of Christ as we should. But yeah. you found Jesus there and yes. God and, yes. and fellowship. We're, and We were very Jesus-centric there. And it's really kind of nice. <laughs> Well, it's an interesting history because, uh -huh. of course, it's it's a break off, uh, the the second largest break off from the from the original church, uh -huh. and uh, so very interesting that you would find your way there. Yeah, did that kind of speak to you? I guess yeah, some of the, it did. the common things, and yeah. we'll find out about that next time on the Ex Mormon Files. <laughs> See ya.